As a disclaimer, guys, I just want to let you know that um, I am by no means a comic book guy, but uh, my buddy Paul is. So he and I are going to discuss what is basically going to be a spree of comic book movies coming out over the next couple of years. So what we're going to do is go through these chronologically. We have a list set up right now for different movies that are coming out this year as well as into next year. Some of them you may be looking forward to, some of you may not, but, you know, we're going to talk about them nonetheless. So, uh, I'm sure all of you remember my buddy Paul from the beach trip and from my Airbender review, which... <laughs> very, <laughs> very fun to record. Yes, it was. <laughs> so, um, we, but we have a list here. Um, Paul, I'll let you go down the list, see what you have right now. Alright, so we're going to start with the Marvel movies. Uh, we'll start with Thor, then the X-Men First Class, then we'll go to Captain America, the First Avenger. We'll touch on the Spider-Man reboot, and we will briefly discuss the Avengers movie, as not much information has been released on it. Then we'll touch on the Green Lantern and the Dark Knight Rises to touch on the major DC movies. Okay. Now, and also, and also for the DC, it's rumored they're going to do Flash, but we're not going to talk about that because that's not even in pre-production yet, so we're going to scratch that one. Sorry for anyone who wants to hear about Flash, you're not getting that in this review. So let's start with Thor, because that's, that's the biggest one coming up. It's probably most people are most anticipating that one. Okay. Um, let me just say, are you looking forward to Thor? I am, actually. It was originally the one I was most nervous about. Um, in the comics, he's like seven feet tall and brawly. And I thought that he would be the most difficult character, but so far it's actually the one I'm most looking forward to. Okay. And if, by the way, guys, if we sound a little distracted, it's because Paul's dog Appa is having fun behind us. And yes, his dog is named for the character in Airbender. So there you go. And we Appa, can post a picture if you'd like. Yeah, we'll, we'll post a picture of Appa later. Yes, because Appa is a big bundle of joy. He can be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to think of Thor until I saw the ending, of course, to Iron Man 2 when they have a little teaser at the ending of Iron Man 2. Right. Okay. And then I saw the hammer, and like I've told you, I thought it looked like a kid's toy. Well, if you if you look at the some of the imagery I have just on my computer, um, my background for the moment, um, the hammer really in the comics isn't that big. Um, yes. It's it's very much something that he can he can swing around and hurl at, at a whim. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not like the ultimate hammer that's this huge axe. Yes. That I actually, I, I do prefer. It, mm -hmm. it looks a lot more uh, dangerous than this tiny little sledge thing. Yes. Now, and and I agree with you that, you know, it, it should be something that can be wieldly. That's something like, that he can just, you know, like toss around. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to see the happy medium between the Ultimate Avengers one and... That's what, ultimate the Ultimates. Event. Ultimates, okay. Between the Ultimates and the one he wields. I want to kind right. of see like a nice happy medium between those. Absolutely. Um, the one I see in Iron Man 2 and the one I've seen in the previews for the movie looks like something I could sell to a kid along with an Iron Man costume. It's funny. <laughs> I, actually, I actually have an image somewhere in my database that's uh, a young child at a, um, a comic convention with... The Thor get up, and it looks like oh, he could probably hold the hammer pretty steadily. In his you know hands. that, and that's what kind of saddens me <laughs> about the whole, the whole Thor theme, and the, that I don't think they're making the movie for kids, but it's definitely going to be a highly marketed movie. As I'm sure you know, Iron Man was these these movies are made to market the kids. They are, which which is fine, but I just expect something a little more than you know. It would be like if they remade Ghostbusters with you know a bunch of the neutron packs. Like imagine, they, um, imagine they made the neutron packs kid friendly. I understand. Like if they made them like like Nerf guns instead of like actual neutron packs. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I do. But I mean, as you and I were discussing um, privately earlier, Thor isn't something that you really need to market towards adults. Like our issue with Ghost Rider, there was no reason that uh, that movie needed to be dumbed down, and there's no reason this movie needs to be overly adult centric. Yeah. So um and. From what I've seen, it looks very good. The uh, the action, the the CGI looks very good. The emotions. I personally was nervous about Anthony Hopkins. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a great actor, but he's you know not a god. Mm -hmm. um, and to add to that, I kind of had trepidations about casting Natalie Portman in it. After seeing her most recently in Black Swan, I have no problems with her being in this movie because mm -hmm. the Oscar nominations haven't been announced yet. But I guarantee she's going to be nominated. 
and I'd be shocked if she doesn't win Best Actress for Black Swan. Because she already won the Golden Globe for it. Okay. Um, and she was phenomenal in the movie, and so I have no doubts as her as an actress. I haven't before, but, you know, I'm still remembering her from the Star Wars prequels. Yes. So, you know. Everybody has, an, everybody has an issue with the Star Wars prequels. Yes, so... <laughs> You know, I remember her from those, a little innocent girl from those movies, but now she's fully grown up and is now fully masturbating in movies. I'll let you watch Black Swan for that one, guys. By the way, if you guys have any questions or concerns about these movies, feel free to you know, post a couple comments. We will respond to them accordingly about any movies you feel that we didn't cover here or any questions or concerns about the movies coming out. Go ahead and uh, voice your comments down below. Just, you know, keep it PG-13. Um, because, you know... Kids... They try to keep most of the movies that way anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, despite us wanting otherwise. Indeed. So, um, next up we got X-Men First Class, which, to be perfectly honest, is the least of the movies I want to see right now. It's very upsetting to me, because I am a diehard mutant fanatic. It's where my specialties lie. Yes, it's, it's my favorite true. part of the drinking I, game. I, I will agree. Paul is very much an X-Man nerd. He loves them to death. Love it. Um, no, way too much. Have wet dreams about it. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, now, this was the movie that when I found out about, I was the most excited for. Um, I wasn't sure if it was a reboot or if it was just a prequel. Now, if I could chime in and say something real quick. When I first heard about X-Men First Class without hearing one thing about it, I was informed that it was going to be about the next class of X-Men. Rogue and Iceman... And the ones that you see as children in mm -hmm. the first few X-Men movies, which I would look forward to more than actually what I'm going to see here, which is basically another prequel. Yes. Well, it appears it's going to be the X-Men from the 60s. Yes. Um, now, the team that they put together makes a little bit of sense, but starts to get a little ambiguous around the end. Um, you start off with Scott, mm -hmm. um, his younger brother. You get a young Hank McCoy. You presumably... Get a Jean Grey, but none have been casted as of yeah. yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we get a young Professor Xavier, who's played by James McAvoy. Mm -hmm. um, we get a young Mystique and a young Magneto. Um, we then start getting into Emma Frost and Sebastian Shaw, who is played by Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is Emma Frost is where I start getting confused because we had an Emma Frost from Wolverine. Yes, we did. That was Native American. Yes, we did. And this one is British the way she's supposed to be. Go away, yeah. dog. <laughs> um, Sorry, Appa wants to play, guys, and he's we're not in the mood, apparently, and he's not taking no for an answer. <laughs> he only wants attention when he's not getting attention. <laughs> you, uh, you then start moving on to characters such as Azazel, who is Nightcrawler's father. Yeah. Um... So there will be some form of love triangle between Raven, Eric, and Azazel. Mm -hmm. And you get into Banshee, for those of you who don't know who that is, uh, the young woman who screams in the it's second movie. It's Siren, right? It's, it's Siren's father. Okay. So we're going to get a, um, a young Banshee, um, and we will have Moira McTaggart, a mutant named Darwin, which I will have... Mike post an image of, and a mutant named Angel Salvatore, who is not to be confused with the angel, yes. just a young Hispanic girl with B wings whose name happens to be Angel. Yeah. Um, it's rumored that Cyclops will be played by Aaron Johnson from Kick Ass. Um, Which would be interesting. It would. He's a decent actor. Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, but again, IMDb, he's not on that. again, they had a Cyclops in the previous. X-Men Origins Wolverine. Right. Why they feel they need to keep recasting these people. Well, mm. along the same respect, they also had Patrick Stewart. Yes. In, in Wolverine. And from the imagery that I've I've found... That well, a really, really CG'd Patrick Stewart, if I may say. Well, yeah. <laughs> he was fairly CG'd in X3, too. Whether it was uh, him being young or him being ripped apart at the Atoms. Um, the imagery that I have found for this movie so far looks like it's probably a, pre or, uh, a reboot. Um, the helmet that Magneto bears looks yes. more like the comics. Yep. Um, Xavier has hair. Mm -hmm. um, the suits have a little more color in them. Um, although Mystique, though she's wearing clothing in the image that I have of her, looks like the X Men Mystique that we've, uh, the movie Mystique that we've grown accustomed to. Yes. Now, this movie, I have no idea where they're going to take it. I'm very confused as the lineup they've chosen. Um, it really looks like they're trying to do the third movie of a trilogy 
where they're just trying to pack everything that they can into it to build off of. Yeah. And it it looks it, it's going to be a make or break. It's I, I can't decide whether or not I'm excited about it or whether or not I am going to ban it. <laughs> I, I, I might just I might just sneak into the movie theater just to say it, and I'll, I'll pay for the um, movie. I, I'll, I'm, I may turn a blind eye if you decide to do that. Um, <laughs> if I'm working that day, if I'm not working, you're going to get your ass kicked by the management. Right. But, you know. <laughs> All that being said, I really don't know what else to say about X-Men First Class. It's not something I'm looking forward to because here's my deal with 20th Century Fox and X-Men, and I've told you this before. Mm-hmm. 20th Century Fox, if they don't make a movie about X-Men every two years, will lose the rights to X-Men. They will no longer be allowed to distribute X-Men movies. And that would be a horrible thing. Yeah, oh, yeah, it would be terrible for 20th Century Fox. So every two years, they're going to make an X-Men movie. Mm-hmm. They've been doing this since 2001. Okay. All right? They will continue to make these movies, whether or not we want them or not, whether or not we like them or not. They will continue to make them because they do not want to lose the property. So that being said, I can guarantee we're going to get another X-Men in 2013. Well, I mean, if they don't mess this one up, that might not be a bad idea. Or if the world doesn't end first. Yeah, well, you know, we're not going to get into that either. (laughs) (laughs) Another review for another time. Another review for another time, yes. All right, so moving on from X-Men, we have the Captain America, the first Avenger movie coming out. Yes, which I'm interested in, but I can't say I'm excited about. I... Respect Chris Evans as an actor. As do I. But he's a comedic actor. As is, I believe that too. And well, I'll touch on this later on. So is Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't feel that they were properly cast in these roles, but they're both talented actors. So we'll see. Um, the suit that they've released for Captain America looks like a comforter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it looks like an over padded comforter that was sewed together. Yeah, I I agree with it. I, I do yeah. agree with that. <laughs> the suit that everybody was expecting was the ultimate Captain America suit yep. from World War II with the brown leather mask and the hard helmet. Um, Which does look pretty damn cool. It, I, I kind of like that look. It, it looks like something they would have put together during the during World War II. Yeah. Um, and then people assume that they would just follow it up with the ultimate suit, which is basically the, the, the real suit, just without the awkward wings on his mask. Yeah. And um, I haven't seen any Hugo Weaving images as him as the Red Skull. But um, I have seen him now. In that as film. that, I think they did a pretty good job casting him for Red Skull. From what he's been doing lately, I think he could do a pretty damn good Red Skull. Well, I was expecting Ralph Phineas, but when I heard about him, I was not disappointed. Yeah, he, he plays. I, I've, I've, I don't think I've ever seen him in a role that I wasn't excited that he did. So I don't really know the story behind that. I know it starts off with Hydra. I know it probably ends with Hydra, and then mm-hmm. somehow they work that into uh, Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Who. Uh, is really overdoing the the ultimate Nick Fury. I, I they, agree. Uh, they need to they need to get rid of that that leather coat because it's it's very Mr. Henderson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so next up we got um, Spider Man. Spider Man the reboot. Uh, the uh, as of yet titled Spider Man. Yes. Spider-Man the, uh, the unnamed movie. titled yes movie. Now I want to clear up one thing right away. Originally when I heard about this, I wasn't upset until I heard. They had interviewed Zac Efron for the part of Spider-Man. And this sent chills down my spine because I thought I was going to shit a brick when I heard this thing. I, <laughs> I wasn't overly scared. I've seen him do things other than High School Musical. And he's a halfway decent actor. I did think he was too attractive for the part of Spider-Man. But he definitely has the build. Um, and it would definitely make money. Oh, I guarantee you that thing would make friggin' money. Just because people would go in there just to see how the hell he messed up that part. Just to rub one off. Exactly. Well, the, the little girls, at least. Oh, yes, yes, yes. High School Spider-Man. <laughs> oh, the <God>. musical. <laughs> um, but then we, we found out that they cast Andrew Garfield, who I'd never yes. heard of. Neither did I. Um, from what I hear, he did an amazing job in The Social Network, which I've yet to see. Which, my thing is, I, Paul just mentioned it a little while ago, I had no idea that that was him in Social Network. I saw Social Network, and I actually thought it was very good, but I didn't even recognize this guy. I had no idea who he was, and then I was like, oh, he's going to be Spider-Man. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, then we found out that they were casting uh, Emma Stone, and I was like, of course, you know, the Mary Jane character. Yeah. And I was pleasantly surprised when I found out that she is in fact cast as Gwen Stacy. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're actually rebooting this series and doing it right. 